Hey, what's up everybody? This is Michael. Welcome to our video tutorial series on publishing to the App Store. In this short video course, I'm going to guide you through the process of submitting an app to the iOS App Store. In part one, I'll start with what you'll need to develop apps for Apple platforms. We'll cover registering as an Apple developer and how to create a paid developer account. Lastly, I'll show you how to set up your Mac for development and registering iOS devices for testing. In part two, I'll cover how to set up and use iTunes Connect. If you already have your developer account and iTunes Connect set up, then these videos are optional and you can skip ahead to part three. In part three, I'll cover how to submit your app to the App Store using the iTunes Connect portal. I'll show you what you'll need before submitting your app. You'll see how to create a new app entry in the My Apps module and entering the required app information. Then, we'll upload and submit the app for review. Finally, you'll see how the review process works and what to expect. Before we begin, you should know, to develop and publish for Apple platforms requires a Mac computer. Any Mac model will do as long as it's capable of running the latest version of Mac OS. You'll also need to download the current release of Xcode. Xcode is the integrated development environment that you can use to develop apps for Mac, iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, and Apple TV. Even though Xcode has simulators that can test your code, I highly recommend that you also have physical devices for live testing, such as an iPhone or iPad. I would also recommend that you study Apple's Human Interface Guidelines and App Store Review Guidelines. This will ensure that your app is suitable for the App Store. The first thing to do is to register as an Apple developer. Becoming an Apple developer is free, but to submit an app to the App Store requires a paid developer account. Start by going to developer.apple.com. Then click the account link. Here I'm going to create a completely new Apple ID. You can use the same Apple ID you already use for your iTunes purchases, but it's better to have a different ID to keep your personal and professional matters separate. Fill in your email, password, and security questions. Once you've verified that you're not a robot, you'll receive an email with a verification code. Enter in the code and click Continue. You now have a new Apple ID that you can use for your developer account. Now we'll go ahead and sign in. Be sure to read the Apple Developer Agreement, or have a lawyer go over it with you. Check the confirmation box and click Submit. We're now a registered Apple developer. I have access to libraries and tools, but to have access to the iTunes Connect portal to submit apps, I'll need to enroll in the Apple Developer Program. Now I'll click Enroll. This page describes enrollment as an individual or as an organization. I'll be enrolling as an individual. If you choose to enroll as an organization, read up on the requirements and be prepared to submit a lot of paperwork. Click on Start Your Enrollment. I'm going to choose Individual, Sole Proprietor, Single Person Business and click Continue. Enter in your contact information. Then read the Apple Developer Program License Agreement and check the confirmation box. Then click Continue. Review your information to make sure everything is correct. When you're ready to submit, click Continue. Here is the cost and a summary for the purchase. Check Automatic Renewal if you want this option, then click Purchase. We have to sign in with our Apple ID once again. 
The following steps only apply to the U.S. and other countries with online Apple stores. For countries without online Apple stores, the process will be slightly different and may require you to fax your credit card information to Apple. Fill out this payment screen and verify your billing information before clicking Continue. Again, verify your billing contact and address. When you're ready to purchase, click Place Order Now. After your order is processed successfully, the Thank You screen will appear. After enrolling in the Apple Developer Program, you'll need to wait a short while for Apple to process your order. Eventually, Apple will send you a couple of emails, one confirming your enrollment to the program and the other granting you access to the iTunes Connect portal. You'll learn more about iTunes Connect in the next two videos. While you're waiting, this would be a good time to download Xcode from the Mac App Store, if you haven't done so already. Once you've received confirmation, sign into your developer account to get to the main page. The Developer Center contains a wealth of information. Here you'll find programming guides, sample code, documentation, videos, a developer forum, and support center. Be aware that some of this information may be confidential. Two areas that you'll use a lot when developing your apps will be the Certificates, Identifiers, and Profiles area and iTunes Connect. iOS devices are only able to run apps approved by Apple and installed through the App Store. Apple does this by requiring that apps have a signed Apple certificate. Apps installed from the App Store come bundled with a certificate, which the system verifies. If there's no signature or it's invalid, the app won't run. As a developer, you'll need to be able to run your apps on your own devices while you're developing them. To do this, you'll need a way to create and sign your own certificates. Start by clicking on Certificates, IDs, and Profiles. You'll need to generate two certificates, one for your development profiles and another for your distribution profiles. You can automatically request certificates with Xcode or manually. It's helpful for you to understand the manual process, so I'll be uploading a certificate signing request from my Mac. Click the plus button to request a new certificate. Choose iOS App Development, then scroll down and click Continue. This page describes how to create a CSR file using the Keychain Access app on your Mac. I'll go ahead and open Keychain Access. From the Keychain Access menu, I'll select Certificate Assistant, request a certificate from a certificate authority. Now I'll fill in my email address and name and choose Save to Disk and click Continue. For convenience, I'll save it to my desktop. I'll go back to the Developer Center and click Continue. Then I'll choose the CSR file I just created and click Continue. Once the certificate is ready, I'll download and install it. Click the Add button in the dialog to complete the installation. Now that I have a certificate for development, I'll need to create one for distribution profiles as well. Click the Add Another button. Under Production, select the Add Store and Ad Hoc button and click Continue. Click Continue and we'll go through the process as before and submit the same CSR file as we did for the development certificate. Again, I'll download and install it. Now I'll click on My Certificates to verify that the two certificates are installed. We're done with Keychain Access. The next step is to register the device that I'll use to test my apps during development. Back in the Developer Portal, click on All Devices and then the plus button to register a new device. I'll need to get the UDID of the devices that I'll use to run my apps. There are many ways to get a device's UDID 
In this case, I'll be using iTunes. Make sure your device is plugged into your computer and select it from the menu just under the player controls. Click on the serial number and it will change to your device's UDID. Right click to copy it. Back to our browser, enter a device name and paste in the UDID. Then click continue. Confirm your device, then click register. The device is now registered and will appear in the list of devices. You can register more devices, such as those belonging to friends and beta testers. Every app you build will need its own app ID. An app ID is a combination of a prefix generated by Apple and a suffix created by you, defined as a bundle ID search string. This creates a unique identifier for your app. From the developer portal, click on certificates, IDs, and profiles. Then from the identifiers heading, choose app IDs, then click the plus button. Fill out the app ID description. Then fill out the bundle ID using a reverse domain name style string, including the name of the app at the end. Click Continue. Confirm your app ID, then click Register at the bottom. We're now ready to create provisioning profiles for our new app ID. Under the Provisioning Profiles heading, choose All. A provisioning profile joins together all that we've done so far, including certificates, device identifiers, and the app ID. Development provisioning profiles are used to build and test versions of an app during the development process. Distribution provisioning profiles are used for submitting your app to the App Store and beta testers. On the right side of the screen, click on the plus button. Choose iOS App Development, then click Continue. Make sure that the app ID for the desired app is displayed, then click Continue. Select the certificates you want to include in the profile. If you have multiple members on your team, they can be selected from here. Click Continue. Next, select the devices you want to install the app on. Again, click Continue. Now I'll give this profile a name. My profile is now ready, so I'll go ahead and download it. Now choose the Add Another button. This time I'm creating the distribution profile, so I'll select the App Store. Now I'll just repeat the process from when I created the development profile. That's it for this video tutorial, where you learn how to get started with publishing to the App Store. In the next video, you'll learn all about iTunes Connect. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.